Good morning, everybody, and welcome back to Stop Loss with Spencer bonus video where I switched sides but kept the same jacket. That's how you know it's a bonus video. Today, we're talking about leverage trend. Leverage trend, Spencer. The reason I wanted to do this as a bonus video is this topic, while really cool and geeky math and is going to make you look smart in front of your you know, self-funded employer or your friends that for some reason like to talk about stop loss, you need to get different friends. The reason why I wanted to do it as a bonus video is because this is not necessarily crucial uh, for a basic understanding of stop loss, but it is pretty cool when you see the math deployed and how it affects medical trend versus leverage trend uh, differently. So, Medical trend, I think we're all probably familiar with what that is. Medical trend is the, the notion that year over year, the same claim is gonna cost slightly more money based on medical inflation or regular inflation. And the most common number I've seen uh, recently is 8%. So let's just assume an 8% medical trend. So in year one, a claim that costs $100,000, of course, no trend is applied to that, 100 grand. Year two, an 8% a trend to apply to that same claim. That same claim now in year two costs $108,000, okay? So that's an 8% increase. Well, look what happens in year three, applying the same 8% trend, that same claim now costs $116,600, which is roughly a 16.6% increase from the first year. That's medical trend. Everybody should be able to follow along, okay? Well, leverage trend is the notion that that medical, uh, medical trend being applied to a stop loss case that has the same deductible year over year, very important to keep the same deductible year over year, leverage trend suggests that the impact to the stop loss carrier is a steeper trend line, okay? So they're going to be reimbursing a higher percentage increase year over year than normal medical trend. So let's look at the math on that. 100K first year claim, $50,000 deductible, $50,000 in reimbursement, okay, easy enough. Next year, $108,000 claim, same $50,000 deductible, well guess what? They're now reimbursing $58,000, okay? That's not an 8% trend, that's actually a 16% trend. So the stop loss carrier is now paying 16% more in reimbursements for the exact same claim. And look what happens in year three, $116,600 claim, $50,000 deductible. Well, guess what? They're reimbursing 66.6% or $66,600 in reimbursement. Guess what? That's not 16% increase. That's a 33% increase from year one. So you can see how those lines start to deviate very rapidly when you apply leverage trend. And again, this is predicated on the fact that they're, you're keeping the same deductible year over year. So let's look at it graphically, okay? Same numbers, 100, 100, 108, 116. Now you have reimbursement levels that start to climb. The claim, yes, obviously is more expensive, but the percentages that are being reimbursed by the stop loss carrier are going up at a much steeper rate. So you could see in year four, in year five, in year six, that stop loss carrier might actually double the amount that they're reimbursing for the exact same claim. Again, assume, assuming you, know, you kept the same deductible. So a couple, couple reasons this actually comes into play. Leverage trend impacts your renewals. By default, uh, the stop loss carrier is going to factor in leverage trend to your renewal. Regardless of if you had any claims at all, this is gonna be a consideration. Now there's a whole bunch of other variables and subjective discretion that can be applied by an underwriter, but at the very minimum, they're gonna consider leverage trend in your stop loss renewal for specific stop loss, okay? The other way that it that actually comes into play is over time, you're more than likely gonna be paying too much in fixed cost or premium if you wanna retain your deductible at the same level, year over year over year. Now, presumably, if you're a successful business, you're self-funded, you're probably gonna you know, strategize to try to grow and presuming your headcount will go up over time. That means very likely over time, you should be increasing your specific deductible to offset leverage trend. You know, this would also assume cash flow is good, your claims are remaining fairly predictable, you have the ability to pre-fund a higher amount of claims up to a higher specific deductible. There's a lot of 
decisions that come into that strategy. But on average, you know, over time, this leverage trend is going to be a factor in your stop loss renewals. And if you've had the same deductible as a self-funded employer, if you're a broker and your client has had the same deductible for five, six, seven, eight years, you really need to consider looking at a higher spec deductible to you know, flatten that curve. We're all familiar with flatten that curve now. Flatten that curve over time so leverage trend isn't driving up your spec premium too steeply. All right, bonus video, a little, little bit shorter, kind of geeky math, but I think it's pretty cool. I hope you can impress all, all your friends over cocktails in three months whenever Texas opens bars back up again and you're just dying to discuss stop loss over a beer. Awesome. Bring up leverage trend. Play my video. You don't even have to remember it. Just say, hey, this dude talked about leverage trend and it's really cool. And I want to show you how it impacts stop loss. Well, thanks again for tuning in, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Hope we got some comments. Hope we got some questions. Hope you impress your friends. Stay tuned for the next one. See you soon.